popular hayloading contest, but first let's take a look back in time at two history makers of this event. The AV Fair and Alfalfa Festival got its start 51 years ago with the Rural Olympics as part of what was then called the Lancaster Festival. Competitions were developed among farmers and ranchers, and one of the most exciting events was the hayloading contest. In 1950, two names emerged as pillars of the hayloading contest and would continue to dominate that event for the next 12 years. They were the Losey brothers. Unfortunately, my father Lester died almost 18 years ago, but his brother Glenn, although he may not be in the hayloading contest anymore, is still loading hay for a living, and he still has fond memories of those past years. Oh, it was about 1949, I guess. They came out to the alfalfa ranch and thought that we were good enough to be in it. So, uh, Lynn Lidecker uh, talked us into getting in it. And uh, we done real good. We got third place our very first year. Great. So you guys were working that? You were working in the hay fields at the time, and so you already knew what you were doing. That's why they came after you? Yes. Yeah. We helped them load some. They come out to the ranch, and we'd help them load. And they thought we were good enough to be one of the best. Lester, my partner, was 17. I was 19. We had to have written permission to be in it. How old are you supposed to be? 21. So you slid in <laughs> underneath all the rules and you still got third place? Yeah. Ten seconds between first and third. We got third. The object of the contest was for two men to load and unload 64 bales of hay onto a truck bed 42 inches or higher. These bales weighed anywhere from 120 to 150 pounds. At first this was all done by hand, then mechanical loaders were introduced in the early 1950s. And eventually, like everyone else, the Losey brothers also went to mechanical loaders, but first they beat the machines at their own game. Well, the uh, first five years we were in it, uh, it was by hand. There was no mechanical loaders. Then the mechanical loaders came along and and um, they um, fewer and fewer guys would get in the contest by hand, so we had to change it. One year they wanted uh, mechanical loaders against the hand teams, and uh, that's from then on then after that everything was mechanical so how did you do by hand against the mechanical loaders oh they couldn't run them good yet we we uh beat them real good beat them real good <laughs> <laughs> lynn lidecker was also a champion in the hay loading contest winning the event the first three years from 1937 to 1939 and he was the one who inspired glenn and lester to enter the contest at a very young age so I saw the Losey boys, and of course, I knew they were hauling hay, because I was in the hay business, too. I knew they were hauling hay. For, some days, you know, they'd haul three to four loads a day. That's truck and trailer. And so you know they were good. So, so then I saw Glenn and, and Lester, and they, I thought they could be a good team. Winning that contest, the hay loading contest, is not seeing how fast you can throw a bale of hay. But this fellow puts this bale of hay right where you're going to take it. And you're going to take that bale of hay and put it right where it belongs. You don't want to make any false motions. You want your team so well organized that you don't make mistakes. And Losey boys didn't make mistakes. Former Lancaster Chamber of Commerce President Larry Lake remembers the Losey team. We're the very best there was and the very best we've ever had. And we've had a lot of great local champions, the Hemis, the Al Duncans, uh, the Sissels, all of those. But uh, Lester and Glenn worked so well as a team, and they were so strong, uh, Glenn being the strongest of the two, uh, Lester being the taller, slender one. They were just fantastic, and they did it in the days before we even had the boom trucks to help load. And also, what a lot of people don't realize, the bales of hay were heavier in those days than they are now. Now they lighten the bales up, they allow the boys to arrange them a little better to load, but they did it in when it was really hard, hard work. Well, we worked together all those years, which was an advantage over the others. And then we practiced 
with the 64 bales a lot. We'd start sometime in July and do it at least once a day before we went home from work. And as it got closer, maybe we would do it two or three times a day. We just, we practiced a lot, even though we worked together. So for 14 years since 1949, Glenn and Lester turned practice into a winning formula. And although their record was finally broken, the memory is still intact. We just wanted to be the first ones finished. 